check, 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 check. Let me check my audio over here, see if it's working. Check, 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 check. check. Ooh. Let me check, check my audio over here, see if it's working. Yep, it's working. So I'm using this, uh, if you guys can hear me, uh, text something in the chat. Uh, testing, testing. So, anyways, uh, I've got this new mic. Well, I don't have a new mic. I'm just am using an old mic that I uh, finally got out of a box. So hopefully you guys can hear it. Hope it's not too loud or obnoxious. Uh, yeah, so anyways. I hope you guys are doing good. Uh, I can see everybody is joining the chat over on the comments. It's good to have everybody. The uh, regular people, Justin, B-Dog, Johnny, Johnny, John, John. Hey, what's up, Jamie Morrison? What's up? It's good to see you guys. Uh, uh, the I will do my best to answer questions. I'm not sure if Parker is going to be here tonight to to uh, field questions, uh, but we'll get right into it. But tonight, uh, I will be uh, designing the tuck case for the. Uh, what I'm calling well, the working title uh, is the "Don't Tread on Me, Don't Tread on Me" deck, and uh, the the "Don't Tread on Me" deck is going to be July's King's Wild Shorts uh, deck, and it's going to be the second deck in a series of decks uh, that are within. That are within the Kingswald Shorts. So it's basically you have the Kingswald Shorts decks, and then within that Shorts deck, there's a sub series that are within that that I do every year, one deck every year. And uh, and that series of uh, decks is are all the July. They'll all come out on July. And the inspiration for the original, the inspiration for last year's July deck. Which was the Valley Forge, uh, which was the Valley Forge uh, deck, and I don't know. Let's see. It's this one right here. This is the Valley Forge deck right here, uh, and the. Let's see if I can get to focus. Anyways, this was uh, last year's July deck, and the Valley Forge deck was inspired by General Washington's HQ flag, and that's this kind of design motif here with the 13 stars. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, and the, the Don't Shoot On Me is the second deck in that series of decks inspired by different historic flags uh, that they weren't necessarily the national flags of the United States, um, but they were historic flags in the history of the United States. And the original inspiration for this series was uh, probably, I don't know, four or five years ago. Uh, four or five years ago, I, I got this... This I think it's like a six or seven deck series, uh, and it was it was this cool. It was an, it was a, from 1976, and it was a bicentennial collector set of decks, and it came like in this red and blue uh, leather box, and you opened it up, and inside were uh, I think it was six or seven. I don't have it out on my bookshelf. It was. It's one of the sets in my collection that didn't make it out of storage when we moved, but it's still in a box. But um, the in the the decks that were in within the box were basically different flags, uh, historic flags of the United States. You had I think some things <clears throat> you had you know you had the the, the main you know the, the modern U.S. flag that flies over the United States. You had like the General HQ flag, the General Washington HQ flag, which was what the Valley Forge is after. You had Ben Franklin's Join or Die flag, which probably will be next year's uh, July deck. <clears throat> um, 
you had the the Ben Franklin join or die, which had the snake that was chopped up into thirteen pieces, and then you had like the the abbreviation of the thirteen colonies, um, uh, the thirteen colonies on each, and then you had the Don't Tread on Me flag, the Gadsden flag, uh, and then some other I can't remember, and then you had like the colonial flag with thirteen stars. Uh, the circle stars, and so that's kind of was the inspiration for the decks in this series of cards. And so tonight, let me just uh, flip over. Hope that me touching this microphone is not going to be bouncing it around. Anyways, the um, you see here, this is the back design. Uh, this is the back design for this deck. Uh, I probably should. Uh, let me see here. I'm going to pull up the Valley Forge back design so that you guys, because I want to talk about because they are in a series and I want to kind of show you the similarities in both uh, let me see, Valley Forge I'm going to open it up here uh, I don't know how to spell there we go, Valley Forge Valley Forge back design okay okay so this is the back design for the Valley Forge. Uh, and so one of the things that I want <clears throat> to excuse me, point out with this uh, back design is, uh, you know, it's the 13 stars, uh, this, these 13 uh, six-pointed stars, this is basically, this is basically what the, the uh, General Washington HQ flag looked like. If you just took, if you take all this and, oops, if you take all of these lines and make them invisible, this is basically what the General Washington HQ fly looked like. Um, and this is what it looked like. And then I added these types of like, you know, tessellating elements to create just a interesting design. And so from there, uh, I wanted to create this back design. And I wanted obviously they're not the same flag they're not the same back design and if you've ever seen the Gadsden flag you know that it's uh, not like this it's not like two mirrored uh, I'll pull up a picture of it uh, you know that it's not a picture of two mirrored snakes but it's a picture of a coiled uh, timber like a mountain timber rattler this is a image of it right here this flag right here don't try to mean it's got <clears throat> uh, you know, a coiled up snake, a rattler, and it says, don't tread on me. And this was a flag uh, originally ad uh, adopted uh, during the during the Revolutionary War in the, uh, you know, seven, I think it was, let me see what the, let me see what the information on it is. I think it's, I think it's like 17, I want to say 17, I probably should have done done this research before I started talking, huh? 1778, adopted in 1778 uh, by Christopher, it was designed by Christopher Gadsden. Um, and they, they use a lot of snake, they use a lot of snake symbolism in the during the Revolutionary War, like Ben Franklin with his uh, join or die flag, and so a lot of snake stuff. So that's kind of what the inspiration for this was. And so that's kind of how I came to this, uh, how I came to this design, with uh, with the snake coiled up with the diamonds on his back. Uh, you know, one of the things about these old flags is sometimes, you know, if we look at if we look at this flag, let me open this up. If we look at this flag, I mean, the snake is very kind of uh, very rudimentary. I can't even say it. It's very kind of uh, simple. Uh, it's the coiling, like the ellipses and the coils are kind of, of wonky, but that's okay. I mean, usually when these guys design these flags, you know, they weren't artists. They were just people that were just trying to create, you know, a banner uh, for their army or group to rally around. And so a lot of times it wasn't necessarily the most well executed design. Um, and so that's going to be fun and interesting at the same time to like recreate that coiled up snake and it still feel, 
it still feel like the original and have and it have that kind of uh wait we got a I lost my window here where you guys are at where'd you guys go did I lose you oops let me just make sure I didn't lose you that you lose you guys I feel like I did did I lose you no okay good crap where'd you guys go uh oops did I lose you oh okay no I don't think so okay I had I was moving all these windows around and I couldn't find where you guys were and I thought I'd I had closed the window uh, so anyways let's get to it uh, let me just answer a few questions that pertain to this uh, deck uh, let me see here let's see uh, let me see why do people always go into the stars I have no idea what that means uh, looks like a club I can kind of see a club in there that might I'm gonna have to use something like that Michael Hart will ask is this a borderless deck no it's not a borderless deck I don't know if you can see it but um, right here this blue line this blue line is the edge of the card and then the dotted line is like the title safe of the, the design uh, and also if you notice the Valley Forge back design uh, one of the things that I wanted to do is uh, I wanted to create a similar border on each of these decks in this series and so if you look at this uh, this border you have blue and then a small stroke which is probably about one point and then this larger stroke that's two points and if you come back over here to this one uh, you can see that it's the same kind of same kind of uh, uh, example where if I just take this copy it and paste it over the top you can see that it's that same motif with a solid color background with a one point stroke and then a two point stroke and so all the decks in this series will have that kind of same motif and also uh, let me see here let me go back oops if you look at this I'm just gonna paste this on top oops I didn't get all of it let me see here let me go back select all copy if you look at this, the two backs together, one of the things I want to show you is that uh, a lot of the stroke width is about the same width. So like the width of these kind of bordered outlines are the same width as these border outlines. And that's something that I want to kind of pull across all of these decks in this kind of sub series of all these flags is the kind of same design motifs all right so let um, me keep reading questions uh, all right how uh, uh, I'm not sure how how do I store all your neural activity intellectual property and similar things uh, I <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I use the cloud, man. I use the cloud to store all my neural activity. I uh, appreciate that, Chris, my details. Uh, uh, let's see here. I'm going to keep reading here. All right. I think we're good. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take, I'm going to close this Valley Forge because we don't need it anymore. Uh, just to show you some of the details in this deck. So you've got the snake, uh, and it kind of show you, I don't know if I still have that open. I guess I don't have it open. But uh, you can kind of see the snake, uh, and he's got the diamond backs. I need to open up the, let's see, Gadsden flag. I'm going to go ahead and pop an image of this in here so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to copy image. Uh, paste all right so whoa pretty big it's way too big all right so let me make this a little bit smaller 
uh, control zero so now the the original snake's head was kind of weird looking you know like I said before the people that originally designed this are not necessarily artists uh, it looked kind of weird and I wanted mine to look more anatomically uh, correct yeah, I mean maybe not to the the timber rattler that this snake is but I wanted my I wanted the you know the kind of stylized design of uh, the stylized design of the snake to look anatomically correct but I, at the same time I also wanted to look you know like awesome BA you know kind of where it's it looks mean it's aggressive because this was I mean this 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 uh, was a very aggressive flag right at the time of the Revolution at war so and but that gives you a good example of how I've kind of uh, uh, translated my own style into that and so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, flag again let me come back here I have this huge mic in front of me and it's kind of weird uh, I'm gonna take I'm gonna open up this uh, my tuck case template that I use for my tuck cases I'm going to pull over this background I'm actually gonna pull over the whole back design as I start because it has a lot of my uh, uh, the PMS Pantone colors that I'm using. Uh, let's see here. Let's put on this layer. Uh, open my swatches up. So I'm gonna select my background layer and the Pantone color. Uh, the Pantone color that I'm using for the yellow is basically straight up. Uh, it's basically straight up CMYK yellow, uh, and it's super bright, super chroma, like the chrom the the chromatic intensity of CMYK straight yellow is super bright, and I'm doing that because this flag, not this flag, not necessarily because this is not the original. Uh, I'm trying to find. I don't necessarily have an example of the original but the flag itself is very very bright yellow and it uses kind of like this yellow green and black um, kind of color scheme and that's that's gonna be the basis for the three decks in the Kingswald shorts series for July and I'll kind of show you uh, so I'm gonna use with Valley Forge the colors were blue and white and then obviously I added red in there just for good measure, red, white, and blue. And so the tuck cases were red, white, and blue. And for this one, in the flag, you've got yellow, uh, yellow, black, and gold. And so the tuck cases for this project, uh, first off, I'm using the same, I'm using the same paper stock that I'm uh, that I used for Valley Forge, which is this kind of like metallic laced. Uh, paper called Star Dream, and it's produced by Nina Paper. It's one of my favorite papers to use. Uh, I love the texture, and I love the kind of like. It's not necessarily pearlescent, but it's like, it's like it has like m metallic threads throughout, and it and, and in effect it gives it like this pearlescent uh, sh sheen to it, and. Uh, and for the different tuck cases, I know that my my crappy web camera is not going to do this justice but the the limited edition uh, the limited edition tuck case will be this kind of like bright gold uh, paper to rip to kind of mimic that yellow and then the the standard edition will be this uh, kind of like green which is this this is the same green that I used for the thoroughbred decks uh, I think I've got one of those I can show you. Uh, maybe, 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 yeah. So this was the um, this is the same paper that I used for the thoroughbred deck. This kind of like metallic green. I know this is a horrible image of it because it's on my web camera. So this would be probably the the uh, the standard edition. This uh, kind of green color, and then because the flag itself uses uh, yellow, uh, yellow, green, and black. Mm -hmm. The gilded edition will be this. That's navy. The gilded edition will be this onyx, this metallic onyx black, 
right here. And then <clears throat> the snake and stuff. The snake itself will be like foil, kind of like with the uh, with the Valley Forge flag. You had like the metallic blue tuck case. And then the stars were uh, white foil or gold foil. And it kind of be the same thing where the snake will be white foil or gold foil or whatever foil I end up using. <clears throat> so that's what we're doing. Let me just catch up and then I'll get right into the design. I'm about 920. We'll see how far we can get. Uh, uh, Jamie Morrison asks, uh, will Close Street do your tuck, tucks for the foreseeable future? They do incredible work. Yes. Uh, the Close Street does an incredible job for me and I don't see any reason why I would stop using them. Uh, the... B dog, the gilded onyx, uh, is is basically what I'm thinking uh, for the gilded tuck case. So the the limited edition, the limited I always treat the limited edition as like the the deck that is closely inspired by the flag, and so you'll have the yellow or gold tuck case for the limited edition. The standard will be the green that mimics the grass that's in the flag, and then the black, the gilded deck will be the black that represents the black line. Now, when I originally made this design, uh, the gold that you see right here, the yellow background is is bright yellow, and then this kind of gold color, uh, it is metallic ink, and it's, uh, I don't know if I've got the Pantone book, uh, I don't have it right here, but it's Pantone 871, which is a really which is a really bright metallic gold. And so what you'll see is this background will be yellow, which will be a, a straight up Pantone ink. And then the, the this kind of gold color will be a metallic ink, uh, Pantone 871, and then you'll have white. Uh, I'm not sure what color gilding I'll do on this deck. I mean, it'll either be, it'll either be yellow. I don't know if I've got a yellow. Uh, It'll either be a yellow, it'll either be a yellow, black, or green because those are the three colors that I'm using in the deck. But I haven't really decided yet. So uh, I might I might do bright yellow yellow. I might be I might do bright yellow. Let's see if I've got one. Let me see here. I'm just looking at my. Uh, uh, I could. I mean, I could do these right here. Uh, these bright yellows right here, I could do these gildings, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't look like gilding. It would just be colored. It would look like, it would just look like colored edges. It wouldn't necessarily be shiny like foil. All right, let's do it. Let's get into it. All right, so oh, I can't believe I was talking about the metallic golds and I wasn't even showing my screen. To go back to the design, uh, everything that's this yellow color is Pantone. Uh, it's Pantone yellow, straight up yellow. And this kind of brown gold color is going to be Pantone 871, which is a really nice metallic gold ink. I use uh, Pantone 871 a lot when I'm using uh, metallic inks. All right, 823 should be good. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to get right into this. Uh, I'm going to bring in this flag just as reference. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so one of the things that I'm thinking is I'm going to have, obviously this is the back design, and so the back design is going to go uh, right here on the back of the curd or the back of the tuck case. And I'm just going to go ahead and get that in place kind of where I want it. I can go ahead and delete this back part because I don't really need that. Um, so I'm just going to get this sized up kind of in the general location that I want it. Uh, there we go. That's close enough for government work. And we'll come back. And so that'll be the back of the duct case. I'll go in here and, and fix this top part in just a little bit. So with this... Uh, Anytime that you see, the way that this is probably going to work, like it did with Valley Forge, is uh, when I did the Valley Forge deck, uh, 
I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me make it bigger. So with the Valley Forge deck, sorry I have the cellophane on it. With the Valley Forge deck, it's got that that base Star Dream paper, the tuck case, and then these these small designs are kind of like a metallic ink. So it's not necessarily full opaque, but it's it's done light enough that the paper kind of shows through that metallic ink and then the white stars are foil so it's opaque and so it's going to be kind of the same thing with this is everything that you see that's white like the snake will be opaque white foil uh, so and you use foil you use white foil in this case because uh, uh, it's really hard to it's really hard to letter press white and make it really opaque. And I want the snake, just like I did the stars, to be super opaque and super white. And so we'll hit it with a white foil and to create that. And then everything that's the gold will be metallic gold ink. So what we're going to do is we're going to recreate this snake on the front of this tuck case where he's coiled up. And then I think above him we will put Don't Tread on Me somehow. We might... We may or may not do that because one of the things that I like about uh, one of the things that I like about the Valley Forge deck is that it doesn't have any big wording on the front and the back of the tuck case. And so, when it comes to this tuck case, I may just put this coiled up snake. I may just put this coiled up snake right on the front and have no words on it where it says "Don't tread on me." And I may keep the don't tread on me for the sides uh, like I did with the Valley Forge where it says uh, Valley Forge on the side I know that you can't read it but it says Valley Forge on the side so that's what we're gonna do now I'm gonna start designing the snake the good thing is I've already done the head so I've got a lot of the work done uh, I was playing around with this before uh, and I probably have I have these old elements I have these old elements that I was playing with. It's really hard. It's it's really hard to make this like coiled up ellipses and it not look wonky because the ellipses of the coils are so like it's 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 nowhere nowhere near being natural the way a co a, a snake would coil up really, and so it's hard to make it look perspectively right and also. I'm trying to make it look perspectively right and not wonky like a third grader drew it. And I'm not saying that the, the original artist was a third grader. But I want it to look good uh, and I want it to look right and I want it to do it in my style. So uh, that's going to be one of the things that I'm you're going to see me struggle with is making these ellipses look right. Who knows? I may not. I may. It may be easy. But I know that that's probably going to be one of the things that I'm going to struggle with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just crop this snake a little bit so I don't have as much of that flag visually. Oops. Uh, let me take this. There we go. And then I'm just going to size this snake. Make sure I'm not missing any questions. I'm just going to take this. Can everybody hear me okay still? Just want to make sure that I'm doing... Everybody still hear me. Uh, I'm just going to take this and kind of size it where I want it. And I can already tell that, uh, you know, this snake was originally drawn for a, you know, a flag. And so it has a very landscape composition to where you can already see when I scale this snake up pretty big that the tail goes off the edge. And who knows, I may like that, where the tail goes off the edge. I don't think that I will, and so I'll probably have to end up. Hopefully it doesn't, it doesn't, it still stays true to the spirit of the flag. If I, you know, coil it up to where it goes up. I don't know, we'll just have to kind of, we'll just have to see how it goes. So I feel like that's pretty good. <clears throat> I'm going to bring down the opacity a little bit on this guy. So I can see... You see transparency. Let's go twenty. Let's go twenty-five percent. All right. So you can kind of get an idea of the size. We're gonna just pull them over a little bit. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here. I'm going to come in here to this back design. I'm going to get this flag off this layer because I'm going to need to select this again. I'm going to lock that layer that has the, the snake on it. I'm going to take this flag, this back design, bring it over here so I can uh, work on it. So I can, you know, take the pieces that I need from it right here. Get on this white background. All right, so first off, I don't need all this other stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and delete most of this that I don't need. Uh, I don't need that. I just basically need the snake, so I'm just kind of clearing it off. Well, I basically just need the snake's head. So I'm going to clean it off, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to create a shape and cut his head off. Shabow. And get what I need. <clears throat> Sorry if I sound kind of nasally. I kind of got like a, probably like a cold or something. I don't know. All right, so I got what I want. This right here. I'm going to pull it over here. Oops. I totally tore up that back design on there. I'll have to put that back. Let me lock this layer so I'm not deleting my background. I'm going to take this white and get rid of it. And I'm going to take this snake head, put it on a different layer. I'm going to lock it for right now. And then I'm going to bring this back. Take this snake head, move it over here so I got it. I'm going to lock it. Then I'm going to take this back design and pull it back over here where it's supposed to be. I didn't mean to uh, pull that over. All right. Just got to put that. I'll send it up later. Just get it kind of where it's supposed to go. All right, let's do this. So I'm going to take my snake head, which is totally awesome. Uh, bring it over here, basically right where I want to put it. I'm probably going to scale it up a little bit. Kind of right there. Feels good. Maybe a little scoge bigger. Uh, yeah, it feels good. I'm going to bring down the opacity even more of this because I don't need it to be that bright. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go 20. That's, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it. 25%. There we go. Good. I'll lock that. So now I'm just going to basically recreate this snake. Uh, we'll do it first like the original and see how it goes. I'll try to clean up some of this, this some of these ellipses to make them a little bit more uh, correct. Let's just let's just down and dirty it here and see how it goes. I'm gonna make me a new layer. I'm gonna lock the head. Uh, so come to here. I'm gonna make that a stroke, and we'll go ahead and beef up the line weight to something uh, kind of around the same stroke width that we want and then we'll go back in here All right, let's see okay got that I'm just gonna start drawing it around here I'm trying to find the apex of the arc See, I can already tell that I need to clean that up a little bit. Come down to the apex down here of the arc. There we go. Like that. This one kind of goes behind. Uh, we'll have to work on this in a little bit. Maybe right there. Maybe right there. Come down to here. Looks like I need to come down a little further. And then there's the apex of that one. Let's bring this Bezier curve up a little bit. From there to here. And then to back to here. And then this is kind of where, uh, let's see, we'll go from here. 
we're gonna go to here I don't want to do this I'm not gonna design it off the edge because I want I want my design to have a, a very clear border so it feels so all the decks in this series feel like they're all a series of decks so let's take this round that off and then let's take this one uh, and you also have to realize that when I'm doing this design like I'm taking my own kind of creative license and making this very geometric and what I mean by geometric is like these arcs in this snake are basically circles um, they're, they're circles and they're just circles that are that are stitched together, and so that's what I mean. My mean that's what I mean by geometric. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go in here and try to clean this up. Ellipses are so hard, and ellipses in spirals are even harder. And then ellipses in spirals that are at angles are basically really really hard to make look right because the human eye is very very apt to see, uh, you know inaccuracies in the ellipses and so I'm just trying to make it visually close and I'm gonna try it really quickly and if it starts to feel right I may keep it I may not then I if it doesn't feel right I may go back to uh, this other thing that I've got here which I basically used you know actual I drew ellipses so I'm gonna try it once real quick here, see how it feels, and I'm gonna do it again a different way and to see which one I like more. Now, you can already see that the base, like obviously a snake, it gets thicker as it gets towards the body. So I can adjust the thickness of the body as I'm going down. So we'll adjust the thickness uh, to get at its thickest point in the middle, like right there then you can see it's still pretty thick here at the bottom and then obviously it gets thin towards the back and then I can make the uh, end of it where's my stroke it's over here I can make the end rounded right there and so we're already getting pretty close to what I mean kind of what it looks like I'm just gonna clean up some of these ellipses a little bit let me bring this one out let me bring this one out a little bit and this is really just me uh, messing with it now one thing that I one thing I do like about the back design are these circular arcs and so what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna delete these here I'm gonna delete those and I'm gonna actually make a circle uh, a circle here and I'm going to basically splice that circle into this this line so that this other so that this design feels like the back design and I'll probably probably splice it in right there so I'm gonna add a vertex and then I'm going to bring this point you zoom in this point real close I know it's kind of hard to see. Uh, I'm going to join those. And then I'm going to clean up that, that meeting. Uh, let's see here. Bring this there. And then bring this out a little bit. And I'm going to come in at this point and curve up that. Uh, I'm not sure if I like that or not because it's kind of this weird angle. I'm just going to go back to the way it was because I like the way it was better at this for right now. All right. So it's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste it again so I've got the original. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this one. Let me change the color of this layer so I can see a little bit better. So I'm going to take this layer. I'm going to go ahead and uh, outline the stroke. 
And so now you've got the beginnings of that snake. Now, <clears throat> some things I don't like about this is I think it gets too fat and you kind of, it becomes like this big, this big mass right here where all the, all the layers overlap. And I don't like that. I do not like the way the tail is small. I feel like that that takes away from like the aggressiveness of the snake and the power of the snake. I really like how the snake tail comes off the edge. Uh, I may try a version that that the snake the snake tail comes off the edge and on the side of the deck and breaks like the border. That might be interesting. It might not be. Uh, so we'll just kind of have to see how it goes. So I'm gonna make this invisible and I'm gonna try. I'm gonna create another one and I'm not gonna necessarily. This time I'm gonna create another one where I'm not using uh, the flag underneath. I'm just basically bring over the side right here and I'm gonna bring the transparency bag up so I can see it. Uh, but I'm basically just gonna create my own. I know that it's got three levels and then they get, you know, they get larger in size. And I want to I want to kind of continue this motif of these very geometric shapes and curves. So I'm going to try a few different things. I'm going to try I'm going to try straight on right angle, you know, profile circles like this back design is. I'm going to try to do some other stuff. I don't know. Let's see what happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create an ellipse about yay big. And I'm going to beef up the stroke. I don't want it on that layer. I want it on this layer. Okay. I'm going to take that and then I'm going to bring it down here. I'm going to make one in the middle. Now I know that this one, I'm going to go ahead and delete this one for right now. Uh, what I want to do is I want to create, if you look at this snake, it creates you know, a triangle uh, like this. So I'm gonna take that kind of shape, let me reflect it over here. It creates this triangle visually. So what I wanna do is I wanna bring that over here and I wanna create that triangle, that basic triangle visually as well. And so this way I can take my own, I can have my own artistic license but then I can be really, I can really be true to like the original, the original elements of the design of that, uh, of that design. And so now, all I need to do is add that third level. I want to make sure everybody's still out there. Everybody good? Uh, anybody got any questions? I don't see anybody texting or chatting, so I just want to make sure I'm answering everything. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to create a step and repeat. I'm gonna do specific numbers of steps. And I just need one, because I just need to create one in the middle. So I'm gonna go one, okay, I'll hit this one, and then this one, and it'll create not what I wanted. So I'll just do it manually. Bring it in the middle. I will size it up to be, to keep that kind of pyramid uh, that pyramid aspect ratio and so you can already tell that you know because I'm using a computer and the computer is generating the ellipses the ellipses are like I mean they're basically perfect uh, that can be good and bad you know good as in it makes the ellipses look better but bad in the sense that it takes it takes some of that life out of the design that the original had uh, We'll see if that's something I want to keep or not. Uh, so uh, I think Parker just texted me and he said he's going to try to uh, hop on and answer any questions. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to stitch these together these uh, these ellipses. So I know that it's going to be coming. You can see here that. Uh, so you come from the snake's head and then it comes off to the front. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this segment of the ellipse, delete it, and then we're going to uh, come back of the neck 
and then connect it there. Now, obviously, I hate this 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 transition here is really awkward because it would be a lot less uh, be a lot more subtle than that. So I'm going to take out this. I'm going to smooth out that transition a little bit. Right about like that. And you got to you have to realize I'm basically this is all just me looking at it by eye and what I feel like looks good. Now, uh now I'm going to do the same thing. Uh delete this section. I'm going to come in from here. And then bring that in like that. And then I'm going to uh, kind of ease this transition a little bit. It's not what I wanted. All right. It's, it's, it's interesting with this kind of stuff like like I know what I'm doing in the sense that I know that I'm creating uh, I know that I'm creating more perspectively accurate ellipses but whether or not that's a good thing for this specific project I don't know because so much of the you know so much of the essence of this flag is kind of its you know, it's, uh, I guess, crudeness. I mean, even like that join or die flag that Benjamin Franklin designed, uh, just that crudeness that was in it. I think it's something that is interesting. <clears throat> and like, I'm even looking like this and I'm like, I don't, I don't like this as much as the other one. Uh, I don't like that. I don't like this as much as that. Now, obviously I have to, I have to, I can mas I can massage the stroke weights a little bit and make it a little bit better, but I really like this better. I like this kind of original uh, original thing. But I know that it becomes too much of a garbled mess, uh, and the and the original kind of deals with that too. You can kind of see that it all kind of comes together. So I'm gonna go back to the original when it's still a stroke and try to. Why don't I hand draw it? Well, I could hand draw it. Uh, I could hand draw it. But I would have to. I would still have to vectorize it. Well, heck, why don't we do it? Let's uh, let's see here. Let's just uh, let's see what happens. Let me uh, let me just open up Photoshop, and we may just do that. We'll see how it goes. What time is it? Ten forty-seven. I got enough. I mean, nine forty-seven. I got enough time to draw it. It shouldn't take that long. Uh, the uh, let's see here. We're gonna just go. Create new letter. Let's we'll make this big because I want it to. I want to draw it big. Eight hundred DPI. CMYK. Create. All right. Let's go now. I'm gonna have to move this mic because the mic is right in front of me. So I'm sorry if I'm banging this mic around as I do this, and it's gonna be a little bit awkward because this mic is right in front of my face. All right. So I'm going to go back to Illustrator, and I'm going to take this flag, and I'm basically going to trace over it, but I'm going to trace over it in a way where I put my own spin on it and kind of fix things and do what I want with it. So I'm going to, where's my layers? And hopefully this works with this microphone being right in my face. So I'm going to bring down the opacity. So I can trace over the top of it and make me a new layer. I'm gonna go get my head because I know I like my I know I like this snake head. Uh, I really like this snake head. I want to use it. Uh, it's one of my favorite things about this. So I'm going to paste it in here. Let's get it kind of where I want it. That feels good. Let me get my, let me fill this black because I like to draw it black. All right, let's see here. Let's make a new layer. 
All right, let's see if this works. Uh oh, there we go. My tablet's got to catch up. Uh oh. Okay, let me just make sure we're all working here. Okay, sorry. All right, so I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to redraw this. Oh, I need to do one thing right quick. My tablet sometimes gets kind of funky. I've had my uh, I've had my Cintiq monitor for like four or five years, and it's it kind of gets squirrely a little bit. Now a lot of this will stay the same, but like. See how it kind of goes higher right here, and that's the apex? I'm just going to change some stuff. And I know that I know that mine will be a little bit different. Mine's going to come up. Mine's going to be a little bit sharper. It's going to come up higher. It's going to come up higher and come down more gradually like that. Also, side note, I really loved this image because when I was a kid growing up, I was a big Metallica fan. I was a big Metallica fan and this was what this is the snake that they had on the black album. So mine's going to look a little bit different like this where it comes up a little bit higher and not as flat. Same thing with this. It's going to come up a little bit higher. And then for the tail, I'm trying to make it a little bit shorter, but I don't want to make it too short. Okay, and I want it to end. At about that same angle. Uh, so I'm trying to make it a little bit shorter. Now my, now I'm just going to come back. I'm probably going to make mine a little bit thinner just to handle th these this area right here, this big clump right here that the that it just visually makes. come up a little bit higher and also another thing that I'm doing I'm just thinking as I'm drawing here so I gotta remember to come up a little bit higher see now there we go now, I'm going to make the original invisible. All right. Now, let's just take a look at it. I'm going to fix some of the perspective issues. I'm going to bring it, stretch it over a little bit. Uh, now, what I'm looking for now is I want, uh, let's see, the one thing that I was thinking about yeah, 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 this looking, this is good. So I'm just looking at the shapes now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this a little less opacity, and I'm basically just gonna draw it again and kind of trim it up and kind of spend a little more time. Drawing gloves. There they are. Well, I, so my, you can you probably heard my hand dragging across the monitor. No, that wasn't me. It was my hand. Uh, all right, let's see here. All right. Uh, 
but I know even though I'm drawing this I have to redraw this in Illustrator and these these ellipses are so <laughs> they're such a pain to draw in Illustrator just because the human eye is so used to seeing things correct and especially when ellipses are off it's so easy for the human eye to see the ellipses off and it's probably just another thing that just kind of like just visually bugs me All right, let's go back. I feel pretty good about that. I mean, it looks pretty good. Everything looks nice. It's got the, it's got that pyramid shape that I want. Uh, this this area here is not so glommed up as it was. Now, the difference in mine. Let's see what time is it? It's five minutes. The difference in mine. Uh, if you look at this. If you look at this snake here, the diamonds, the diamonds you can see like the full, the full uh, view of the diamonds, and so I could do that. I could do that on my design, and I tried that on the original design where I would, you know, I would draw the diamonds. What I would do first is I would draw, I would draw a line. I would make a new layer, and then I would draw a line down the back that basically represented his spine and I would just, I'll just show you how I would do this because I did this on the last one and ended up not using it because I wanted it to I wanted it to feel more graphic so I draw this to represent his spine like that and then I would just come back, I'd make this layer kind of, I'll bring back the opacity. And then I would just come in here and sketch those diamonds around that spine. Kind of like that, where it kind of curves around. You know, and then I could go back fill that stuff in you get the picture but uh, <clears throat> what I what I ended up liking the most is I kind of abbreviated that information because I did that originally and I did it uh, it's basically I think I still have the uh, I still think I have the uh, the brush that I made let me see if I've got it so I made this I made this pattern brush that if you create a line I can go in here. Uh, let me see if I still got it. Yeah, it's right here. So I made this pattern brush that's like, like these diamonds that have a little kind of like cat's eye, uh, the cat's eye little uh, slit. And so I made this, I made this brush to where I could draw the brush. I could draw a stroke like this, and then I could assign that pattern brush. And then it would, you know, curve it around. But when I did that, uh, and I can kind of show you what it kind of looked like, it just ended up being way too noisy. Where, like, if I took it here, I'll just give an example. And if I assign that pattern brush. It just was too noisy, and also, and also, it was like <clears throat> one of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to get this kind of feeling of the snake going under and over, kind of weaving under and over. And when I originally used this kind of like diamond back, uh, this diamond back pattern, where it went, went all the way down like this. Just the complexity of the design and being able to see the whole diamond and having that little cat's eye split in the middle, it just made it too visually noisy. And it also made it also made the 
the depth of going under and over of the snake hard to read. And so that's why I kind of abbreviated it and also gave my own style to it and my own license to it. Um, and I kind of I split the diamonds in half and kept them kept them going on the kind of the spine to where you only see half half of the spine. And another reason why I did that is if I were to have this, <clears throat> uh, it would break up. And you and you have to do this a lot of times when you're designing. Uh, you have to think about the final product and how it's going to be used and how it's going to be printed and how it's going to be uh, the design is going to be utilized. And one of the things that I knew if I'd use this, that that white foil design, which is everything that you see white on the tuck case, that white foil design would have been broken up a lot more and so the impact of that opaque white foil over the the yellow would have been greatly diminished and so having this very abbreviated diamond you still get the feel of the original you know the spirit of the original flag but it also it also allows the new design to be to come out and be really impactful in terms of like the white foil and so what I'm saying is, now, the the only problem is, is I may have trouble, I may have trouble with that now, because in this instance, with this design, everything is very orthographic, and what I mean by orthographic is, the view of the viewer's eyes to this design is basically perpendicular, and so there's no perspective tilt to there's no perspective tilt to the the snake and so it makes that graphic kind of abbreviated uh, that abbreviated diamond it, it kind of gives you the latitude to do that and I and I'm worried that with this because this is not an orthographic view of the snake it is a very perspective style view of the snake that we're not going to have the freedom to do that as easily as we did before and so, and what I'm trying to explain is like, you have to realize that what I would have to do is, I would have to pick a side, let's see if what happens. And I can just sketch it, who knows, it may work, it may not. And I can just kind of get an idea of what it's gonna look like. You know what, I think it is gonna work. I don't know though, we'll see. And I can just kind of sketch it to get an idea. Let's see. So I'm picking a side. And it'll end up on the right side. You know what? It, I think it's going to work. I'll be all right. There's only one way to find out, I guess. And then his rattle will start right here. So, yeah, I think that'll work. That's good. I like that. Um, you know, it feels. It's mine. It's my drawing. It's my kind of artistic take on that flag. Uh, so I like it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the drawing. Let me just grab the head too. Uh, all right. It's 10 o'clock. So I'm going to come in here to Illustrator. I'm going to try to bang the outline out as quickly as I can. And then I'm going to try to, well, I tried to copy it. Uh, then I'm going to try to answer any questions. Why am I not, why is it not pasting for me? Right, let's see here. I'm going to have to do it the hard way. I'm going to just save as a JPEG. Snake. Snake. JPEG. Go into Illustrator. Let's open it up. Uh, snake. I'll go ahead and image trace it so I can get it off the black that that background. You know, and honestly, if I wanted to. It might be easier for me to just hand draw this and like go back into Photoshop and hand draw it one more time uh, and then just line, you know, trace that in Illustrator. But I don't think, 
no. See, you get all these kind of wobbly lines, and I don't want the wobbly lines just because I hand drew it. Ignore the white. Expand. All right, let's take that. Let's put this on this layer. Who? Boo boo. See, I was talking about that Metallica. I probably shouldn't say Metallica because I'll probably get like flagged by YouTube for copyright material. So I'm just going to not talk about it. All right, so I'm going to put that kind of where I want it. And I'm still going to have problems with that tail. I know it. I may end up just making that tail go off the edge. All right. That feels pretty good. Let me just bring the opacity down. Okay. Mm. All right. Draw these ellipses. Sorry if I get quiet right now. Let me just try to match up these ellipses as well as I can. Let me bump up the stroke weight. Now I want to make sure that my stroke weight is about the same. Uh, so let me just bring this over here. I want to match it up. So I'm just matching up with this stroke to this one. So I need to go like my base stroke needs to be like 1.75. Because I want the designs to feel the same. All right, that looks pretty good. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy paste this. And then I'm going to bring this out to right there outline the stroke delete oops I want to delete the point uh, there we go 1.75 I'm going to bring in here I'm going to Bring this out a little bit. I'm going to make this back one smaller. Just because... Actually, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to do it a different way. Paste. I'm doing this by... Okay. Now, I'm going to take this... Delete it. I'm going to go from here. I'm going to bring this vertex up to this apex of this arc. I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to bring it out a little bit more. I'm going to delete this one. Bring this up. that bring this up to the apex of that arc bring this out this is really just me nitpicking this stuff so I'm sorry if this is extremely boring but this is what I was talking about if these ellipses are just like a pain and I was putting it off, and I was putting it off, but I cannot put it off any longer. I have to draw these ellipses. Notice how it's also starting to graduate and get bigger a little bit, the thickness of the body. 
don't know if you know anything about geometry, but <clears throat> um, the if I if I were to take these Bezier curves, that's what these little handles are. I could do it where they're at an angle, but that's you have a more chance of them going off if you go at an angle. So I try to keep all the Bezier curves at right angles. All right, that's looking good. So let's do the same thing. Let let's make a lips. Bring it on down here. Everybody good? It's ten ten. I know I'm over. Everybody still good? Everybody still interested? In what I'm doing here? Okay. Good. That feels good. I'm going to delete. When's this gilded six foot five going on sale? I don't know. They're still sitting in my office and I haven't mailed them to the shop in Austin. That feels good. So I'm gonna connect these. That feels good. Let me just bring this up a little more. I like that curve. I like that curve. Let's do this. Mail too straight to me. All right. Let's make that one. I'm feeling good about this. Snake. He's feeling good. Go from here. Oops. I need to move this up here to the apex. Move it out just a little bit. Connect those. Strokes. Uh, okay, bring it up a little bit more. Bring this one up a little bit more. Uh, B-Dog asks, is the plan to have one member section on the site or will table players and bicycle decks have separate member sections with different items? The original plan was to have each... Uh, each subscription have its own uh, specific members area, but I'll be straight up with you. It was super confusing and super it, just because I had to keep three different product. Here's the problem with that is <clears throat> most of the people, I would say 75% of all the people had some sort of one of each or something like that where they had... Uh, a bit of everything and it was and it was and that was my original plan but what happened was after the fact I realized how much of a logistical nightmare that was going to be and so at this point it's basically like if you're a subscriber if you're a subscriber uh, to any of the shorts the Kingswald shorts or the table players you basically have access to the same members only page and honestly, uh, it's just because I'm lazy. <laughs> I'm lazy, and I didn't and I didn't want to. I didn't want to put my crew through uh, one more kind of like logistical nightmare thing because they're doing such a good job right now of trying to keep everything straight. Uh, you know, at least you know, especially like compared to last year where we only had you know one subscription to keep straight. So. So to answer your question, right now, just one subscription members only page. I was I was looking at the other day, uh I'm sorry I'm just talking about nothing. I'm just trying to make this not as boring. Uh I was looking at those like members only jackets. Like getting some members only jackets and making some members <laughs> members only jackets with like the King's Wild logo on or something. All right, so I'm gonna bring this. This needs to come up some. So does this one. Let's feel better. Bring that down. I think it would be dope, a members only jacket. All right, we're really close.
to having something that I think that I'm going to like. Uh, I see a few spots that need to be uh, cleaned up. All right. I'm just going to go at it. I'm just going to go for it, and I'm going to take this tail because I feel like if I chop this tail off anymore that it's just not going to feel feel like the original. So I'm just going to go for it and make it go off the side. I'll come back to that. I don't like that tail just yet. It needs some help. It also comes down more right here. So I'm gonna come up a little bit, break my rule of right angle bezier cuz. Bring this up a little bit, smooth that out. Yeah, I'm going to have to clean this tail up quite a bit, actually. Ooh, I probably can't do that right in the microphone. It's probably really loud. Will the bicycle decks... Let's see. Uh, will the bicycle decks be numbered like the shorts? Yes, the limited editions... The plan is for the limited editions to be numbered like the shorts. Ugh! I got talking and lost my focus and made this ellipse really bad. But this part is behind, behind the viewer anyway, so... Ooh, that tail looks bad. We bring it here. Who is this guy drawing this ridiculously ugly tail? Man, it's like I've never used this program before. Let me try something else. Will they have the same number as the shorts? They won't have the same numbers as the shorts only because we have a different max number of the additions that we're making. Uh, but I know that the team has tried to match numbers for the LTD. Boy, I kind of just screwed the I screwed this last ellipse up a little bit here, didn't I, folks? I got the talking. I'm going to try it a different way. I'm going to try to make the core of the line first. And bring this up here. that come over here now I can take this widen it out like this there we go Make this tail a little bit wider, then bring down the back for the rattle. Make it a little bit wider so it's a little more pronounced. Then I will make the back round, round end. 
And then I need to fix this last part here. Oops, it flipped on me. Okay, bring the bottom out, bring the top out. Feeling pretty good about that. All right, make a stroke. Ba -ba -da, ba -da -bing, ba -da boom. Come in here, delete this. Okay, good. 1.75. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> it's still a little wonky right here with this tail, but most of this you're not going to even see. So I'm not going to spend any more time right now on it just for time's sake. I'll fix that. All right. Now what I want to do is I'm going to come in here and delete, delete the lines that don't need to be here. All right, I'm feeling feeling pretty good about that. Let me delete the drawing underneath. Or the there, yeah. I'm feeling good about that. I feel feels pretty good. This needs a little bit of help down here. This uh, arc, and I can just do that uh, visually. Uh, I'm just gonna delete that, and then I'm just gonna draw my own new arc right in here, like that. Bunk. Actually, I'm gonna come down here. Connect it so that arc is nice and pleasing to the eye. I'm going to delete what I don't need. Shrink like that. Now I'm going to save this because I haven't done any saving whatsoever, which is a Bush League idiot move. Uh, let me save this. So this is going to be... And then... Uh, Let's see, Kingswald Shorts. Sorry, I gotta go through all my folders here. Kingswald Shorts, July. Uh, don't tread on me, Tuck V1. Continue, continue. Uh, all right, let's see, 122, 1022. All right, I'm going to do one more thing, and then I'm going to call it, and then I'll start answering questions. And I'm, I'm just going to rush through and draw the the diamonds on the back. And I'm just going to freehand it, basically, and I'll come back later. I'll come back later and uh, clean them up if I need to. Excuse me. Just gonna try to keep them regular. I know they get tighter. They'll get. They should get tighter as they come around these bends. And I'm trying to bring the the apex or the the top of the diamond to the middle. The middle of the snake's body. Let me flip this, bonk. Nope, that's not what I wanted, bonk. <clears throat> so let's go here, here, here. Start down here.
excuse me, I'm sorry about that. Got all this cold nasal thing going on, and I'm right in the mic breathing, and I got one lung, and I'm making all kinds of noise. I apologize. So we'll have one coming in here. And then have one in here. I just want to do this for you kind people just to kind of see the snake come to a finish but I know that I'm probably going to come back and clean these diamonds up as well I got my kids, I got my daughter's uh, Lincoln Log set. I, mean, I used to have Lincoln Logs when I was a kid. I used to love Lincoln Logs. Um, <laughs> and I swear, like, every time, anytime I do anything, or I always think about, oh, I wonder if this could be a deck of cards. <laughs> and I totally wanted to do a Lincoln Log deck. And, like, do all the court cards, like, as, like, Lincoln Logs. All right, let me just put these rattles in. I'm gonna rush through this. Close to being straight people. What kind of ruler am I using? I guess I could just freehand it here. I can worry about the spacing later. All right, all right. There we go. There's a rough, a rough end of the snake. I'm feeling okay about that. I like it. It's going to serve its purpose well. Uh, who knows? I may keep it. I may not keep it. I may totally trash it and use something else. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, let me go. Yeah, the Whispering Imps, they did have the, the tail. I think the tail of the... Uh, I think it was the tail of the uh, snake was on the, the side. And I think the another one like the... I think there was like a Madison deck that had something on the side. I can't remember. Uh, let me let me change my screen here. We can see my beautiful face. All right. Uh, let me just go back to it one more time before I leave it. The uh, it's hard to see. It's hard to tell right now, uh, but just because it's so much, there's still so much more to do. Um. At this point, I'm looking at it like I want. I want to. There's kind of the there's kind of the give and take between the original flag itself and also my own artistic license as a playing card designer. Uh, because half of me wants to use the snake like it is here, where it's coiled up in three levels mainly because the flag but then there's the other half of me the artist and the artist in me that I, I really like the orthographic view of the snake on the back design where it uses like these perfect circles um, and I don't know if there's a way that I could achieve uh, achieve the same thing and still be uh, still be um, true to the flag but still be able to have my own artistic license and what I'm saying is like 
if you look at this, if I take this design here and I come into Photoshop, obviously this design is a two-way design, okay? It goes both ways. And what I'm thinking is, is there a way that I can have my cake and eat it too, where I can still pay homage to the flag itself, but then still use use this very circular design and still pay homage to the deck, but be able to use it to where uh, where I where it feels like it feels like my deck and I put my stamp on it now the thing about that is is I didn't necessarily do that with the Valley Forge and it was more of the fact that 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 star design with the Valley Forge uh, the 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 design with the Valley Forge was just so easy to make look cool because of those six pointed stars and so one of the things the thing that keeps popping in my head is I like I like these circular elements where I'm using the ellipses as circles and not necessarily perspectively skewed ellipses. And I also like the the kind of like Celtic knot is the wrong word, but I like the fact that it comes over and under, over and under a lot. So one of the things that I keep popping in my head is can I do a design that's kind of like this where the snake uses those circle elements and then maybe it like comes up over itself again but I would want to make sure that it stays a circle to where it like becomes a one way and this is for the front of the tuck case this is me only talking. This is this is for the front of the tuck case, not necessarily the back design. So what and the reason why is I really like that design motif of those circles to where you've got a, a perfect circle here, you've got a perfect circle here, you have a perfect circle here, 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 and here. And then basically what I do is and I can go back and do whatever kind of design I want. And let me see here. To where, um, let me just go back a little bit. You know, I can compose it however I want where if I come in here and let's say this is a circle and then I've got a circle here, a circle here, and then maybe then I've got a circle here, here, and then maybe it goes into a bigger circle, like right here that weaves in, and then it comes out into a circle here. And then into here, I'm thinking about it as I'm doing it. And then maybe somehow the tail comes out like this to where maybe the snake where the snake would be like this so the circle comes out like that comes up weaves in and then maybe I did a little bit wrong there Something like that. See now, now my only issue with that is, I think it's cool. I think it would look really cool, but does that departure, uh, does that does that departure from the original uh, Gadsden flag? Is that departure too much to where you lose you lose the fact that it's the Gadsden flag? That's kind of one of the things that I'm thinking about. Um, I don't know. That's just one thing I'm thinking about. Maybe I can try to figure out a way where I can do it where it's where I get to use my circles, but 
it's more of a thing where the snake goes like one, two, three, like that. And then these, these circles here are perfect circles instead of ellipses. I don't know if that makes sense. Then you get, maybe that's the way I have my cake and eat it too, where uh, uh, I get to do that circle where it's, I say circles a lot. Let me see what this what Parker's saying here. The snake, though, is coiled in a defensive but aggressive posture to symbolize "Don't tread me." Of course, yes, it is, and I think and I think that that's I mean that's that's very at the heart of the what the flag was created for was like, you know, don't screw with us, don't mess with us, because we're not gonna just sit here. All right, I gotta do it. I gotta just I just gotta see what it feels like. Let me just take this. Let me get my head back in there. Because I love the head. Maybe I'll just do the tuck case with the head and that's it. <laughs> so let's think of it like this. We got a circle here. <clears throat> We've got a circle. A circle that's a little bit bigger. And then a third circle. Oops. Now I'm trying to keep it to where I can still overlap them. And what I'm looking for is the little peak, see this little peak right here of the yellow? If I can see that peak, I know that I know that these will weave in and out. So I'm trying to keep it to where I see a peak of yellow here, a peak of yellow there, a little peaky peaky. And so it, it'll come here. I don't know, it may or may not work. We'll see. But that's something I'm thinking about. But it's too large, it's already 1037. So let me go back to the questions over here. All right, you guys, all right, Parker, what questions do we have that I might have missed? Uh, let's see. Let me just see if I have any questions. Uh, all right, so let me come back here. So, do you guys have any do you guys have any questions uh, about this deck or this process of what we're doing that we kind of went over tonight that I can answer answer for you before we leave? Question: What color will gilding will you do on this deck? I don't know yet. The three main colors of this deck are yellow, green, and black, and so uh, it's going to be maybe one of those. Uh, can I make the deck? Can I make it look like the snake is constricting the whole deck? Well, here's the thing. Uh, it's a cool idea. The snake that's on this flag is not a constrictor. It's a rattler. So it's like a venomous rattler snake. Uh, and it's not necessarily a constrictor. Uh, I know that that's a nerdy techni technicality, but that's... Uh, that's... I think the, the fact that it is a rattler is a very important part of the kind of sticking with the spirit of the original flag that I want to keep so that's a good good idea but I think it I think it veers off just kind of like what I was talking about with that where I'm getting away from the idea of the three coils of the defensive stance I want to stay true to that original spirit but good question good comments what else anybody think anybody have anything else It is a theme, not a replica. Yes. Yes, I, I totally understand with you. And I think that, you know, I think that I'll probably, because I like, I know that I like this, the way that I've done these circles. Uh, and it's, it's so graphically powerful that I like it so much that I'm probably 95% sure that I go with something like this 
where you have these three concentric circles that intertwine with each other. Uh, I'll probably end up doing something like that. Uh, so we'll just have to kind of see. And I probably will end up going with something like this. Uh, B Dog says, "Would you consider limit limited run subscriptions like the Pi series, eight decks and done, or something other deck series?" <clears throat> yes, I mean I, I consider that I consider that to be what the shorts are in all of them. They're basically a year long, and at the end of the year they're done. And I know that it, I just keep continuing, but I think that what you're asking is, would I consider a subscription? of a thematic series like with the pies being thematic in the fact that they're uh, all pie decks yes I have thought about that I have been tinkering with an idea of uh, doing a federal 52 series that's a, like a six deck subscription that has like six decks in it and they're all federal they're all like re they're all kind of like have to do with the original series but they're different in a way I can't I don't know I haven't really wrapped my head around it um, of what that is and what that looks like but yes I've thought about doing some type of series that is a subscription and it could be a subscription that's like starts in the middle of the year and only has four decks and after the fourth month or the fourth deck in the series the subscription is over and it's done I had thought about doing that with the the pie deck but the Pi series, but I just didn't want to add a fourth. I didn't want to add a fourth subscription, and I wasn't, and I wasn't quite sure of. Uh, I, I wasn't sure that I could, you know, do it, do all the artwork for that many subscription decks. So I kind of, I kind of made, I kind of gave myself some leeway with the Pi decks when, in the sense that I can release them, uh, kind of whenever I want. And like specifically like for the the chocolate pie, which is the next one, I think we're shooting to. I think we're shooting to release that on my birthday. Uh, well, not my birthday. My birthday is the twenty third, and that's a Sunday. I think we're shooting to release that on the twenty second. But I digress. I don't necessarily want to talk about specific things that are have specific times because I think that five years down the road, when somebody's watching this video. I think it's kind of, uh, it kind of pulls it, pulls it out of the the of the video that we're talking about. But to answer your question, yes, I have thought about that. Uh, what else? What else? Any other questions uh, specifically about this design or this process that you guys have seen tonight? Let's see if there's any that I missed, possibly. don't see any that I've missed maybe maybe not I'm just going back and looking all right I think that's about it if you don't have any other questions uh, as I'm closing if you have a question just go ahead and and type it in there and I'll try to answer it before I go uh, uh, you like the deck colors I don't think that I've seen you use these colors before I've used the yellow uh, I was. I asked. I I told that to my wife. Uh, I said I haven't used a bright yellow tuck case before, but she was like, "Yeah, you did. You did that with the the uh, the crayon deck." And I was like, "Oh yeah, that was bright yellow," but I haven't used the uh, I haven't used the yellow with gold and white before. And I and that's another thing is like I like I like doing these really different decks because it 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 gives me a chance to kind of do that very thing where I get to use you know use colors like I like a good example is like purple or violet I'm not I'm not necessarily I'm not I don't dislike violet I don't dislike purple but my own design sensibilities don't ever take me to using violet or purple uh, and I did that with like the equinox the equinox 2 the Equinox 2 deck where the, the gilded tuck case was purple. And I think it turned out really well uh, because I was kind of forced to do something that I wasn't used to doing. Not necessarily that I wasn't used to doing it because I can, you know, I can match up colors 
just based on color theory, but uh, I think that I didn't personally use purple a lot, and so I think it was nice to use the purple for that deck. Um, uh, let's see. I'm trying to see. Parker's telling me something. No, I think it's bottom chat. I don't know. Maybe not. I think I'm seeing all the uh, questions. Uh, all right. I think that's it. I'm tired. I want to uh, call it a night. Uh, hour and 45 minutes. I always go longer. Uh, the one last question is about the Lord of the Rings uh, deck. The uh, Is there any update on the Lord of the Rings deck? The update is... I feel I feel like that I've gotten far enough ahead on all of my work for this year. Like right now, I'm working on the July deck. Uh, I feel like that I've gotten far enough ahead that I feel like I have enough breathing room now to start uh, uh, start on the Lord of the Rings deck. And with that said, I actually did some initial sketches in the past. Over the past two days, I've done some initial sketches, and where my where my brain is leading and where my ideas are keep taking myself is I posted I posted on my Instagram today a picture of the uh, the Arthurian Joker that's the diptych Joker of the Questing Beast, uh, uh, and I have to say that the the Ethereum deck is probably, our, you know, some people don't like it, some people really love it, but that's, I mean, that's that's the same with all of my decks. Uh, the Ethereum deck is probably one of my favorites, and it was probably one of my favorites to draw only because of the style of art, because it was kind of inspired like the Book of Kells, uh, and I, I, I really enjoyed drawing that deck, and I had a blast drawing that deck. And my, like, my ideas and concepts and the way I'm envisioning the Lord of the Rings deck keeps leading me back to that kind of style of that kind of, like, very archaic, rudimentary, uh, geometric style drawings. But doing it in a way that it's not necessarily... Book of Kells, but doing it in a way that is my own, my own uh, take on that kind of style. Um, so yes, and that's and I say that because the the drawings that I were do, that I was doing today, and sketches, uh, were kind of in that style and going in that direction. So yes, uh, so hopefully, in the next uh, the next few weeks, we can hopefully start maybe seeing some sketches for that kind of stuff. I'm kind of limited on. I won't be as as open and as free with the Lord of the Rings process stuff only because I, I'm you know everything that I do is not licensed. It's all my own intellectual property, and so I'm kind of free to be as free of with it as I can and, and I want to be. So uh, I kind of have to play a little bit legally more nice with all the Lord of the Rings stuff, and I don't. And I'm not necessarily going to be able to show everything, like all the sketches and all the drawings, uh, up front. That doesn't mean that you won't get to see them at some point, uh, like in a behind-the-scenes video or a behind-the-scenes book or something like that. Something like that. But uh, you may not be able to see as much as you normally do with all my work because of the legal kind of the copyright. Because I have to get everything that I post publicly approved by the Tolkien estate and their and their agents. So. Yeah. Anyways, that's that. Ten fifty. I appreciate you guys. Uh, uh, I really appreciate uh, you guys being here. Uh, you guys taking the time to watch this. I like that. I like that idea, Brett, Mr. Bailey, taking it back a little bit further to Beowulf. I mean, that would be a great. That's great because I mean. Tolkien himself was hugely influenced by that kind of, uh, you know, Anglo-Saxon Norse time period of that kind of uh, that time period of literature, and that was definitely where he found the most of his inspiration was that kind of period. So that would make a lot of sense. 
the I'm also and I'll say this one last thing just because it it came to my mind something else I'm excited about is the not August but the September deck for the Kingswald shorts is a Robin Hood deck and uh and if you ever if you if you know anything about medieval art and stuff you remember those kind of like medieval tapestries that like ladies in waiting and people would hand stitch and hand crochet um a great example and i bring up this example is um the the uh the t the title sequence or the opening credits for robin hood prince of thieves the movie that came out in the early 90s uh, i really loved that movie when i was a kid um it, I, I i went to the theater and watched it over and over again but the opening sequence to Robin Hood Prince of Thieves is that kind of like tapestry crochet. I hope my idea for the Robin Hood deck for the September deck is to do all the court cards in that style uh, where it actually looks like crocheted uh, tapestry. Uh, we'll see how that goes. There's parts of that that sound really fun, but there's also parts of that that sound really not fun because I'm going to have to do like all the stitches by hand not by hand but I'll have to do every stitch to make it look right it's going to be a big pretty big beast so that just came to my mind but anyways I keep digressing and keep talking I should just shut up and let you guys go so uh, anyways thanks again for your time I uh, appreciate this uh, be on the lookout for uh, like I, I, I mentioned uh, I mentioned in the one of my Instagram lives tonight that uh, we're trying to put together a possible podcast, uh, uh, a 52, this first, what we're trying to figure out first is like a 52 episode podcast where I talk about, I go back to all the decks in my past and go through them and one episode will be me talking about one deck of cards that I've designed and like the whole process, the inspiration, all that kind of stuff. So be on the lookout for that. So guys, I'll see you guys later. I hope you found this entertaining and uh, I'll catch you on the flip side. See you guys.